Do you think computer Anyway, when we started working it was mostly uh, film and we were putting together uh, like the title sequence to Hill Street Blues, it was all assembled as little pieces of film. So when you saw the cars racing down Chicago the streets in Chicago, those pieces were physically stuck together as film. Nowadays when we do a title sequence the uh, the pieces are assembled electronically and everything is videotape editing even when you shoot film so we'll do a sequence uh, that shot on location or shot on an animation camera there's a piece of film we'll take that film it's telecined and it's put onto videotape and then it's edited electronically and then delivered to the network as a piece of electronic uh, material on videotape or uh, the latest development is is uh, is digital videotape uh, and that seems to be leading up to high definition television which will be uh, probably in the next five years where we'll have widescreen TVs and um, they'll all be you know real high resolution video uh, a lot of the TV shows of course now are still shooting film at some point they're going to have to go to, to high definition you were asking about uh, computer graphics everything we do now has a computer in it somewhere. We're either doing uh, 3D computer graphics to do a logo, uh, just designing basic type for a, a even if something's going to be shot on film, we design it on a computer. Uh, things where normally when I was in school I'd ink something and you'd spend uh, a day or two just inking the logo, like with the Cheers logo. Uh, I'll show you, matter of fact, I've got the Cheers, the original Cheers. Uh, well, I brought it home because I was worried our building was going to get burned down this weekend. So. Uh, but anyway, these pieces are, um, you know, it used to be that you'd, you'd have to do them by hand. Now the computer does it. Mm -hmm. and, and you direct the computer to do uh, uh, various tasks. And it, it's really much easier. Computer graphics, like uh, uh, 3D uh, graphic animation, we've been using systems these are oddball names, but we use a paint box for doing most airbrush painting of electronic graphics. We use a paint box system, which is a very, about a, well, $150,000 uh, computer, and it's a graphics system where you can, you draw with an electron, electric, electronic uh, stylus, a pen. You actually physically draw, just like you'd be drawing with a pencil or a, a paintbrush. Uh, we also use what's called a Harry which is a paint box that will make things move and it's just like an animation system. I mean it can it can take your drawings and it can uh, flip it just like a, a like you're flipping through a series of paper drawings uh, and it also then makes it all move just like an animation camera. Uh, there's uh, we just finished a job the other day uh, for Delta Burke and we used a, a system called the symbolic system which is a a combination paint system where you can paint a logo or paint a, an, a, a figure. You can create a three-dimensional animated character with the symbolic system. Uh, within about a day you can take a, a, a drawing or three drawings of a, a little animated figure and create a three-dimensional uh, character that can walk around, it can talk, it can do all kinds of things. And that didn't exist a year ago and you can give it all kinds of different surfaces and finishes and you know it's it's really uh, it, it's really changing the thing I mentioned to you before about knowing a lot of different things is that you've got to be able to decide which system to use when do you use film when do you use videotape when do you use uh, the computer there are times that you don't use all the all the possible high-tech items either because of it you know it's too expensive or because you uh, don't have time for it or you know or or maybe it's just not that important you know sometimes things should be simple and don't have to be quite so complicated anyway uh, there's a you know our business television and film have changed a lot in the last uh, five years do you think that having some art background has helped you in this too yeah it thing that I just did a, I used to teach it at USC and I just had a, a in the last uh, month or so I went over and talked to some graduate students there and they asked the same question. 
What's important is that you approach all these new technologies as tools. And the thing I said to him, you know, when you take a drawing class, they say, we well, get a soft pencil. You get a, you know, get this particular pencil and you get this particular kind of paper. Okay, and you do that and you learn how to draw. Well, that pencil's a tool, the paper's a tool. The paintbrush that they teach you, tell you to use in a painting class is another tool. The paint is a different acrylics or oil. Well, the paint box, the Harry, the the uh, the the symbolics computer system, the Wavefront, which is another 3D graphics uh, system that you every NFL game you see has these elaborate openings with 3D globes spinning around and all this stuff. It's all done electronically. Those are all tools. And if you know how to design, you know how to look at something and go, you know, you can you can do a little sketch of it and say, this is what I want it to look like, and you go, boom, this is this is how it's going to turn out, and you end up producing it on a you know five hundred thousand dollar computer, and it you started out as a little <laughs> drawing. It's there's a similarity between that little drawing and that finished piece, and that's because you know how to draw, you know you know how to develop artwork. It's real important. The design thing, design, you know. Design is a concept. It's coming up with an idea, and that's that's also something real critical. It's important to know how to come up with a concept and execute the concept. And that's for for a design, either a design of a logo. The logo has to do something. The design has to identify the the film or the uh, TV show. You have to know how to design it properly to mesh with the with the show. Uh, same thing with the sequence that goes behind that logo. If you're designing it, it has to it has to, has to serve a certain function, and that's um, pretty much. It's just like the person who designs a car. You design a car to either carry uh, you know uh, six passengers, or you design a car that carries two people real fast. It's just the job it has to do. And for us, knowing how to design a sequence is the same thing. You design it to to do its job. <laughs> this was a model that was developed for a, one of the, the science fiction films that we produced, and it was designed and created with a, uh, it's all in plastic, and it was uh, vacuum formed uh, to, this, to this shape, which was based on a, a drawing that, that uh, we supplied to a model maker, and then the, the finish, the, there's an airbrush, and, and there's um, type elements that are, were added. There's uh, this was about this was after Star Wars, so everything had uh, a little fatigue on it to create that sort of Star Wars uh, look. But anyway, this was a fighter, and uh, it had it was mounted onto a, a, a motion control system that moved the model in conjunction with a camera, and there were lights that illuminated here to create the exhaust, the the propulsion on the on the craft, and then there's back in there where you can't really see it. Is is a screw mount for holding the whole model in place, and then there were some other ones that went in places in the front and the side, so you could do different angles on the on the craft. So this thing could actually spin and do all kinds of elaborate things, and it would fly uh, around various planets. It was used over and over in uh, a couple different films. Again, it was it was designed for one thing, and it ended up being used for for several different things. But again, it's it's design, and uh, uh, it's supposed to be futuristic, and it's looking kind of like a, a lemon now. I don't know, it's not quite so futuristic anymore. You keep talking about design. Did you mm -hmm. get a lot of training in that when you were in film school? Do you feel? Yeah, I, my because I was I came from uh, an art background going mm -hmm. into film school. I approached almost everything from documentary filmmaking to uh, uh, dramatic filmmaking to writing. Did all of that the same way I would do a painting or a drawing. I approached it, you know, with visually doing a sketch or doing a storyboard. Everything was always planned out. And design, I think, in, in terms of film, is is uh, a, a, a way of determining how something's going to look ahead of time and creating a, a complete concept and that's I think what a lot of uh, kids miss sometimes when they're when they're making their first films 
they go out, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and they go out and it's not planned out very well and things don't work out and, and uh, they didn't think how something was going to look when they put it against something else. And, you know, those are just design considerations. And I think uh, for me, especially being interested in, in film graphics and video graphics, electronic uh, graphics now, uh, it was good to have that background and good to, to do that kind of pre-planning. We storyboard, storyboard almost everything. I don't know that I have one here, but everything is planned out. You, you want to stop the camera and I'll go get And this, this shows you, this is a, a drawing that was done for a, the opening sequence of a movie for TV called, the movie was called Crash, and it was about a, the story behind a, the crash of a L-1011 in the Everglades, the swamps of Florida in the Everglades. And the producers just needed to see how the, the, this was all going to be a model, and they had to see how it was going to look and how it was going to be built. So we did this to represent the opening sequence, and this is where the, the L-1011 crashed. But this was, again, this is pre-planning, this was designed, and then model makers then went ahead and built about a, oh, I guess it was about a 10 foot by probably 15 or 20 foot deep model of the, of the swamp with water. This was a storyboard that we did last year for a show called uh, Eddie Dodd. It was on ABC, and this was this was just the, the last pan, the last page of a of a multi-page uh, storyboard. But it shows elements that would be in the sequence and shows the 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 sequence of the images leading up to the end. And you see, we came in this case we described this as uh, a constant zoom, and we pull out of um, this is Treat Williams, and it would pull out of his eye, and did a still shoot with him, a high resolution, uh, large format, uh, color uh, film, uh, the still of, of Treat Williams, and then all of these were grainy, blue and white uh, images, uh, very grainy, and then out of all of these images, you pull into this, you know, high resolution color image of him. So it was kind of, it was, it was all storyboard in the client was able to uh, <coughs> understand what was going on and it helped us understand what was going on. This was uh, another one, a storyboard for a show called Over My Dead Body which was on last year and this just, this showed the client and showed us a style and I did this, this took me probably two days to do the storyboard but it was enough to show the, the, the client the logo showed how the sequence would work and there was some animation that was going on here. This was all graphic. This was a... Was this computer graphics? No, this was all artwork. This was mm -hmm. all animation camera. Mm -hmm. And here's the first page of the storyboard for our original concept on Cheers. And we, I had already designed the logo for the, for the show, the Cheers logo. But, and, but the sequence was wide open. And as you see, we were doing the history of places where people go to uh, to drink and so here you see a cave painting you see the Cheers logo with the with the brick wall then you see uh, a cave painting where you see a an animal's obviously just been killed by a hunter and he's having a drink then you see Egyptians inside you know with the hieroglyphics and you see them holding up glasses and then they're drinking I mean if you see the progression here you're realizing that you're seeing a lot of people drinking and it really became a, a, a tribute to alcoholism. And so uh, <laughs> we realized it, the producers realized it, and we changed it to the concept, which it now is. It's, it's sort of the, the history of the Cheers Bar, and it's also a place where people go to be with other people, not necessarily to sit and drink. So anyway, the storyboard did its job there. It told us we were wrong uh, about what we were doing. This was, this was a layout piece that I designed, this was for a, a, a mailbox. This was a pop-up mailbox for a, a, a main title, and it was like a pop-up book. You see a, a, a book, page opens, up pops a mailbox, a folding mailbox that pops into the shape of a mailbox, and on top of it is the show's name, which in this case was Rock and Wagner. So this this was a construction that, that I did, but this was the layout for 
how that would look, and it gave me an idea of the colors, and uh, that was all produced uh, as a piece of graphic, and then shot on film with a snorkel camera. This, I mean, there's all of that too. There's all the different camera systems that you can shoot things with. It's not just film. It's uh, it's just in that case, the snorkel is a camera that can come down and uh, get very close to things, and in this case, it made the pop-up book look uh, huge. This is the Cheers logo. I I uh, designed it originally on paper, inked it by hand on paper, not with a computer, and then took my drawing after it was approved by the by the client at Paramount Studios, took it to um, a bronze company in City of Industry and had it cast uh, in bronze, and then they cut it out with a <coughs> bandsaw, and then this was photographed uh, on. Uh, a color transparency and then shot on an animation camera. And this was then the original piece, this is the piece that was uh, originally shot and used for the main title of Cheers. And subsequently it's been used, uh, the, uh, the logo itself has always been on, on the animation camera and as a piece of artwork. So this really served its function right at the beginning and, and then wasn't used for quite a while. Matter of fact, it hasn't been used since. So.